Bill O'Reilly here, Monday, June 21st, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Drug seizures at the border surge. Officials in New York City dropped charges against looters. California Governor Newsom attacked in Oakland. Portland police disband an elite unit after a cop is indicted. Catholic bishops move forward on new rules for pro-abortion politicians like President Biden. Also ahead, America, not one country anymore. But first, more than 180,000 Central American migrants now entering the USA each month. The influx of people also bringing a record number of narcotics into this country, particularly the deadly opioid fentanyl. Border agents confirming the amount of drugs flooding into America is up 300 percent compared to the same time last year. Thank you, President Biden. Hundreds of people arrested for looting and rioting in New York City during the George Floyd disturbances have had their charges dropped. About 60 percent of individuals arrested for rampaging across the five boroughs will face absolutely no consequences. Violent crime in New York City up 40 percent. Thank you, District Attorney Cy Vance. A 54-year-old homeless man in California attacked Governor Newsom. The governor was walking to a barber shop in Oakland when he was suddenly approached by the disturbed individual. Police say the man hurled a water bottle at Newsom while screaming profanities. The suspect's family claims he has a long history of mental illness, but California is not going to protect its citizens. And so Mr. Newsom found that out the hard way. Portland, Oregon's Rapid Response Police Team unanimously voted to disband. The unprecedented move by 50 police officers came just 24 hours after a fellow cop was charged with fourth-degree assault for using a baton against a rioter. Portland is a disaster. Democrat Congressman Ted Lieu labeling American Catholic bishops hypocrites after the church announced a new debate that could ban pro-choice politicians from receiving the sacrament of communion. The doctrine would deny leaders like Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden from taking part in the sacrament. The bishop's order will come this fall. I do not believe there will be a ban. In a moment, America, it's two countries today. Right back. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized. Bonuses to 21% targeted. They strategically locate in lower risk, high demand areas people want to move to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk. Their short- and long-term strategy provides for steady returns right now. NRIA is an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. So, if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, start your due diligence at nria.net. Or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. 14. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at NRIA.net. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. Last week, I vacationed in Wyoming. First thing, no masks. Everyone is face forward. Second thing, no homeless. It's cold at night in the summertime Rockies. But I didn't see anyone sleeping on the streets. Somehow, shelter is available to all. Skin color doesn't seem to be a problem there. Lots of different races touring the Tetons and Yellowstone. Rangers say it's calm on the human agitation front, the way it should be in the land of the free. Wyoming is a unique part of America, but so is San Francisco, where thousands of homeless drug addicts now roam the streets, assaulting the senses of fellow citizens, looting businesses without restraint, dying in record numbers from overdoses. 
The difference between the two American places, Wyoming and San Francisco, is simple. It's called the will of the people. In San Francisco, there's little concern about social order, so citizens have none. Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, the symbolic leader of the city, presides over a district that is dangerous. Mrs. Pelosi lives behind a wall. Others do not have that luxury. They are at risk. Speaker Pelosi is not at all interested in protecting people. Quite the opposite. She's an abortion zealot who's been told by the city's archbishop not to receive communion because of her dismal record on the unborn. She's also a race provocateur, using her power to divide Americans based on skin color. This causes unrest. President Biden is right behind Nancy on abortion and racial division. The people of San Francisco have elected Nancy Pelosi 17 times, so they deserve the depravity they are getting. Not all of them, but most. Now, in Wyoming, it's unheard of for public school children to be taught that their country is essentially based on evil. No one is tearing down statues. Few are canceled for stating an opinion. But in the mega cities of New York and Los Angeles, careers are routinely destroyed by political witch hunters. It's now a gruesome sport. Hollywood is the worst. In Wyoming, almost every household has firearms, yet the murder rate is one of the lowest in the country. In Chicago, gun restrictions are severe, yet thousands are murdered, most of them African-American. Again, it is the will of the people. They elect leaders in Chicago who blame homicide on society, not actual criminals. So there is no longer one America. Now we have fiefdoms like the Middle Ages. King Cuomo in New York has radicalized the state. So street violence is surging. Yet according to the polls, most Democrats would re-elect him. The bottom line is this. Many citizens simply do not have the will to make America work, do they? I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve the message by writing it. For more honest news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com, and please check out my new book, Killing the Mob. In a moment, something you might not know. To mark 20 years since 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is giving 200 mortgage-free homes to America's heroes and their families. What a great gesture. And in a moving tribute, the foundation CEO, Frank Siller, will spend August to September 11th walking from the Pentagon to Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and then on to Ground Zero. Thanks to your support, the Towers of Light are to return to the sky at the Pentagon and the Shanksville memorials on September 12th. Those lost to 9-11 related illness will be honored. And on Veterans Day, those lost to the war on terror are having their names read aloud. Both events are happening for the first time. So please honor our vow to continue to never forget, to do good, and please act now. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. On this day in 1964, members of the Ku Klux Klan, with the help of local law enforcement, murdered three civil rights activists in rural Mississippi. The search for the missing victims would spark a national outrage and spur the biggest voting rights protest in American history. Here's the story. Following the Civil War, the ratification of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments sought to protect former slaves by forbidding states from abusing them based on skin color. So the movement to block black people from the voting booth went underground. Founded in 1865 by a group of Confederate veterans, the Klan rapidly grew from a secret fraternity to a paramilitary force bent on reversing 
the federal government's policy of Reconstruction. Local chapters were formed throughout the country, especially the South. Members terrorized and sometimes killed anyone promoting equal rights. In the early 1960s, activists set up an interracial team to ride buses into the Deep South to stop the Klan terror and install equal rights for all. These so-called freedom riders were viciously attacked. For example, in Alabama, a bus was firebombed. Another boarded by KKK members who beat the people inside. Three years later, Michael Schwerner, Andrew Goodman, and James Cheney were coming back from a trip to Mississippi when Deputy Sheriff Cecil Price, a Klan member, pulled them over for speeding. He held them in custody while other Klan members prepared to kill them. Eventually, the three men were released, but then they were chased down in their car and cornered. They were then shot and buried in shallow graves in Mississippi. The FBI was dispatched to find the killers. Working with local informants, they did eventually find them. But Mississippi refused to prosecute the alleged murderers in state court. So the federal government stepped in and charged 18 men. Just seven were found guilty. The ordeal is portrayed in the very fine film, Mississippi Burning. And that happened on this day. Back after this. Can thieves really steal your home's title? Take it from this thief who stole more than 150 homes and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. That's why you need home title lock. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh, no, I have title insurance for that. No, it's, it's in my name, or he would have to get some special document. They would call me. You know, nobody's calling you. After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that, that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. Heard enough? Go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim and enter radio for 30 free days of protection. That's code radio at HomeTitleLock.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. (laughs) 